What up, party people? What up, YouTube? Yeah, this is Chef, New Zealand murder history. And check this one out. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, unsolved disappearance of Jessica Boyce. Now, I use the word disappearance, but police have actually launched a homicide inquiry, so it doesn't really seem likely that she's going to reappear as um, the New Zealand police don't launch homicide inquiries very lightly. So, um, yeah. But anyway, my show's not suitable for children. Kids, click off. And anyone suffering from PTSD, also click off. And seek support from your GP. Or call one of the many 0800 numbers available. My show is just for educational purposes and not to cause offence to victims of crime or anyone discussed, really. My show is just put together mostly from internet sources. I don't have inside information on this case or any other case. And if, if there is a case where I do know something that's not in the media, I'll tell you about it. And what I'm getting at by that is I... um. I just have the same access to the media as you guys. In fact, if you guys are paying for subscriptions and stuff like that, then you probably might even have better access than me. I'm not an expert on um, any of this. I'm just putting this show together to get the word out about this case in particular, the Jessica Boyce um, homicide inquiry, and let everyone know that there's a $100,000 reward up for grabs. Uh, been put up by the New Zealand police, so um, I thought it'd be a good time to make a show about this. So what happened to Jessica Boyce then? Well, I don't know, but someone does. Yeah, so like I said, it's not going to be a full scripted podcast uh, about the disappearance of Jessica Boyce for the simple fact there's not a lot of information about this case being shared with the public. I'm basically just reading an article and I'm going to show you guys um, some pictures in a minute. But anyway, it's been five years since Jessica Boyce was last seen alive and well. The 27-year-old blonde lady was last seen in the small town of Renwick. So that's where I'm filming right now. We're on Renwick. Uh, actually, not only are we on Renwick, we're actually on Boyce Street, um, which I find quite bizarre. I thought I'd come here to do a show, and then I seen Boyce Street, and I was like, okay, well, I'd better park up on Boyce Street and do the show about Jessica Boyce then. So that's where we are parked right now. This is, uh, let me give you a shot. This is Boyce Street, Renwick. Uh, quite a nice little piece of the country, really. Lots of wineries and stuff like that around here. But yeah. So we're just eight kilometers to the west of Blenheim right now. So Blenheim being the closest sort of central um, hub for people, you know, do their supermarket. I mean, there is a supermarket thing here in uh, Renwick, but it's quite small, you know. So imagine a lot of people just go into town to do their shopping. Eight kilometers. Um, hang on, yeah, yeah, west of Blenheim, right, because Blenheim's eight kilometers east that way, but anyway, it was on March of the, 19th, the 19th of March, 2019, was the last time Jessica Boyce was seen here, uh, her mother saw her in the morning, and then that's it, uh, she hasn't been seen alive and well since. So, although her body has not been found, yet she's already been called a homicide victim, so to me it looks as if the New Zealand police actually know a lot more than they let on when talking to the media about this case. But anyway, Jessica Boyce has a nose ring. She has tattoos on both her biceps of her arms, so upper arms. She wears earrings and has blue eyes. Not ice white blue eyes that some people have, her eyes are close, closer to the color green, but they aren't green eyes, they are blue. You know what I mean? Those sort of darker blue eyes, that's um, her eye color. 
Anyway, I'll show you as a picture. Maybe that's the best way to do it. So all these pictures are from the New Zealand Police website. Let's have a look. Uh, let's get a picture of her with the glasses first because it's quite iconic, I think. Yeah, so this is who we're talking about here. Jessica Boyce. Uh, let's get that in the sun, actually. That's better. So that's her in her black rim glasses. These are her black rim glasses again. They were found broken in um, the four-wheel drive that she'd borrowed off her mum. They have her DNA and the DNA of another unknown male on the broken glasses found under the seat. The four-wheel drive. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. In fact, let's get a picture of it so you can get a bit more context. So that is a Holden Rodeo ute. Uh, belonged to Jessica Boyce's mum, and that's it parked up at Lake Chalice. But the police don't believe that she drove up there. Yeah, here's a quite a good photo of her there. So it's quite sort of like um, recognisable photo. You can tell she's quite a... She has a sort of like a specific look to her, you know. She doesn't necessarily just blend into the crowd. Like, she's the kind of person, you know, you would remember if you... Well, you know, if you met her, I'm sure you probably would. She um, has a nose ring, blue eyes. She just has a distinctive sort of look about her, you know. Here's another picture of her. That hat, that hat almost looks like duck hunting camouflage hat, but it's not. On closer inspection, it's a... Um, flower print or something yeah we're going to read that article now let me just set this up so we've got here we go and I'm going to read you this article off the New Zealand police website it's called Jessica Boyce 2019 Sit up here so you can hear me good. All right. New Zealand web, New Zealand Police website article, Jessica Boyce, 2019, available on www.police.govt.nz slash stolen wanted slash cold case. Website updated 2024. Jessica Boyce 2019 is just the name of the article and 2019 refers to the year she vanished from the small town of Renwick. All right, now let's read the article. Jessica Boyce, oh, by the way, there was no uh, author or anything, so the, the author of this article is just the New Zealand police. Like I said, it's off the police website. Jessica Boyce was 27 years old when she vanished from the Marlboro area on Tuesday, the 19th of March, 2019. Within a few months, police announced that they had launched a homicide inquiry, and now five years on, her desperate family are still waiting for answers. Police never give up on a cold case. Over the years, the dedicated team of investigators followed up hundreds of leads, tip-offs, and interviewed potential suspects. However, Jessica's body has never been found, and while the file has always remained open, recent developments have brought the Operation Largo team, so that's the name of the homicide inquiry, it's called Operation Largo, you know, they have codes and all that. Anyway, brought the team together again with renewed sense of momentum. Supervising is the, Mal Supervising is the Malbro Investigations Manager, Detective Senior Sergeant, Sierran, Sierran, uh, sorry, anyway, whoever this guy's name is, Sierran Sloan, who's been involved in Jess's disappearance since the beginning. 
Jessica was known to local police as a drug user and dealer, despite a tumultuous few months leading up to her disappearance. Her mother Kay felt that Jess was back to being her old self, a free spirit who loved her family, animals, going barefoot with big dreams for her future. Kay last saw her daughter on the morning of the 19th at her Renwick home. When Kay returned home later that day from an appointment, she discovered that Jess had taken her red Holden Rodeo ute without permission. The following Friday night, Kay received a call that her ute had been found an hour's drive away at Lake Chalice, but there was no sign of Jessica. An intensive search and rescue operation was launched, and in the weeks that followed, speculation and rumours ran wild in the community. Information flooded into police, some genuine, some not. Several items found in the ute rang alarm bells for police and Jess's family. A crystal necklace that Jess never took off was hanging from the rear view mirror and a pair of black, black framed glasses believed to belong to Jess were discovered broken under a seat. The Operation Largo investigations have investiga sorry, the Operation Largo investigators have pub publicly stated they that they believe the Ute was staged at Lake Chalice to mislead investigators and that there are those who know exactly what happened to Jess. After careful consideration, police are now prepared to release new information. The broken glasses were sent to ESR for forensic analysis, resulting in two DNA profiles being recovered, one male and one female. The female DNA belongs to Jessica, but the male DNA remains unidentified. Crucially, police have revealed that they have a key group of people who make up a person of interest list. They number 8 to 10 people, including both males and females, some Pākehā and some Māori. Within that group, one was in their late teens at the time Jess disappeared, two are related to each other. Forensic electronic analysis has also allowed police to connect some of their persons of interest list to crucial time frames and locations that relate to Jess's disappearance. Jessica's family have been deprived of a future with their daughter and sister. They deserve to know what happened to Jess and why. Police have announced a $100,000 reward for material information or evidence which leads to the identity and conviction of any person or persons responsible for Jessica's disappearance. If you can help, call 0800 Cold Case. That's 0800 Two six five three two two seven three, or email the police cold case investigation team. The cold case episode can be watched on full on TV NZ Plus. It's cold case episode three, nineteenth of March, twenty twenty four. So they aired that five years uh, to the day of her disappearance. I actually watched that when I was on t uh, when it was on TV. And, um, Yeah, I wanted to do that this case back then, but there's just not a lot of information on this case online. But I um, decided to do it anyway because I thought people might want to, well, you know, come forward with um, information and stuff like that. Uh. All right, let's read the rest of what I got written here. Okay, so basically the family asked police to put up a reward. And to their credit, the New Zealand police have put up a very generous reward. Uh, it's currently 100000 New Zealand dollars. For evidence leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons responsible for the murder of Jessica Boyce. Now this is a deal that you guys choose to make. Or girls, if girls out there have information, guys and girls, whoever's watching this show. What I'm saying is, this is a deal that you choose to make with the New Zealand police. And I'm sure that they won't just be handing over a hundred grand 
because you heard some bloke you know done the mo I mean done the crime you know what I mean it's like but you know if you do have important information like where Jessica Boyce is buried stuff like that well then I would encourage you to come forward because um well you know it's like the police said we've got to bring her family the answers they're looking for even if it's not what they want to hear you know they need to know what happened to their loved one So also, anyone out there who's watching my show right now, who knows something, go straight to the top. And what I mean by that is go talk to the cops, please. You don't need to tell me all about it. I'm just a chef with a part-time YouTube channel. And on this YouTube channel, we don't accuse people of murder around here. We just, we just don't. That's not at all helpful. And that's why I've turned off the comment section on this particular video. I mean, I don't have an in-depth understanding on how the reward works. Like, if you were somehow involved, um, uh, for example, you know, there could be someone out there who may have lent someone a car to drive out to Lake Chalice, where Jessica Boyce's four-wheel, well, where her mum's four-wheel drive was found. Because, yeah, police don't believe it was Jessica Boyce who drove it up there. But now, if all that's in fact accurate, well, that would imply um, another vehicle following the Holden Rodeo Ute out to Lake Chalice as well. Um, to dump the red Holden Rodeo Ute, you'd need two vehicles, you know. You can't, um, well, you'd, you'd have to do so to take the driver back with you because, you know, it's like Lake Chalice. I don't know if you guys know Nelson Lakes District out there. It's like a very remote sort of place where people go hiking and stuff like that. So it's not the kind of place you can just jump on the bus anyway, put it that way. But anyway, let's look at some article. Oh, hang on. Now we're going to cut that. I was going to read more articles, but I decided not to because, um, well, basically, um, Jessica Boyce's brother has put out an appeal recently on his own YouTube channel where he's asked people not to spread information and stuff. So that's why I decided just to read the um, New Zealand Police website's concise article about it. Because you can find information on other articles, but it's hard to know what's what, you know what I mean? It's hard to fact check this stuff. But anyway, my point is, if someone out there is watching and wanting to know about immunity from prosecution because they lent someone a car that was involved in a crime or whatever your role may have been, well, I could only advise you to talk to a lawyer about these things. And I can't believe I'm actually saying that. I really hate criminal defense lawyers, eh? They're a bunch of fucking deviant weirdos. Not my preferred company to keep. But like I said, they may be able to answer um, any questions you have Because I'm sure there are people out there who know what happened to 27-year-old Jessica Boyce on Tuesday the 19th of March 2019 in the small town of Renwick, Marlborough Sounds District, South Island. And some may come forward because they want the 100 grand. And some may come forward because they feel bad for her family. But some won't come forward because they're involved in criminal circles. We're talking to the police is strictly forbidden and sometimes discipline can be dealt out by organized crime so they'd be scared to come forward you know what i mean but some others may come forward because their conscience is uneasy with what they may have done But yeah, like I said before, um, her brother, I think it's her stepbrother, but anyway, her brother has a channel on YouTube called Shadow Matter, which is actually really um, quite good. And he put up a video recently asking for people to come forward with information uh, on the disappearance of his sister, Jessica Boyce. So yeah, he specifically asked people not to spread uh, misinformation on the case. 
so yeah if you don't know nothing beyond the news reports and articles then um just 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 uh, you know just forget about it but if you do know something you know come forward I'll drop a link to his show in the description. It's actually really good. He talks about Australian true crime as well. I watched it for a while. It's quite interesting. But um, anyway, enough about that. This is a show about Jessica Boyce. And like I said, New Zealand police are not talking to the media about the suspects and the investigation, etc. Other than to ask for help from the public and talk about the 100k reward. And that's okay. They don't have to tell the public as long as they're doing good work in the background to put the personal persons responsible in prison. I mean, it sure does make it difficult to write a true crime podcast about the case, but that's okay. This doesn't have to be the best true crime show on YouTube. Just if someone out there is watching and this jogs your memory about something sketchy you may have seen on the March 19th, 2019, then come forward, please. Even if you were somehow involved, come forward, all right? Who knows? Perhaps you can redeem yourself. I mean, let's face it, boys and girls, we've all done something we're not proud of. But you can't take a secret like this one to your grave. Because sometimes a dirty little secret will take, to, will take you to your own grave. And you won't like it. Think about it. Chef New Zealand Murder History Podcast. So yeah, what happened to uh, Jessica Boyce? Well, we don't know. Oh, one more thing. Look, I turned off the comments so no one can write mean comments about her anyway. But you know, let's all um, let's all remember that you know some people get tied up in um, you know problems and drugs and things like that. But we don't need to judge. Um, Jessica Boyce had a lot of problems. She was in a quite bad car crash. A while ago and um yeah that kind of that kind of effed her up one of her friends died in the crash uh the bloke driving the vehicle uh was jailed i believe on a i think i think he did get manslaughter yeah because um he was um he was high as a kite and he crashed the car you know but i mean um yeah I mean, everyone's got problems, right? Okay, I want to show you guys this Boy Street sign because it's quite interesting. It's kind of cool.